Hello parents, this is Jeff Frame, School Counselor at North Tall High School. I'm here to give you a quick tutorial to, find, to let you know how you can keep tabs on your students' grades and attendance from the comfort of home. We use a tool called Aries and you as a parent have access to this. Both parent and students have accounts that can access Aries and do different things. When you log into Aries, um, this is a process that you get when you enroll or register. If you have questions about logging into Aries, please contact Blanca Carrillo. She's our school registrar, and her um, contact information is available on our phone tree, so please just reach out via phone to Blanca. However, there's a few things that I want to show you. First of all, when you log in, if you have access already, you can see automatically here on the screen the student's grades. This is a demo student. This is not a school. The Screaming Eagle High School is not our school, obviously. So the, the, the classes and some of the, the setup is a little different, but essentially you can get the, the nuts and bolts of how to check your grades. The first thing that you'll see is the grade um, portal. So you'll be able to see at a glance how your student is doing. Okay, so you can see their, their grades as of now. This is their, this is their progress report or what we call um, their grade book. And then this is this is in progress grades. Once their grades become final grades, they go on to their transcripts, and you can see them here on the grades and the transcripts. Which I'll show you in just a few minutes. You can see the course title, the teacher's name, the actual grade book, which we'll click on in just a second, the mark that they currently are at as of right now, um, their past five days of attendance. So you can see any type of attendance or absence. So you would be unexcused, T is tardy, I is ill, and so on and so forth. There's a number of things. The number of missing assignments are things that have not turned in. Um, and then when, when this grade book was last updated, and that is an important note because you might have students come home and tell you, oh, I turned this in, I turned this in. And you can look and see, okay, this was last updated yesterday. When did you turn this in? Oh, I turned it in two weeks ago. If that's the case, they may not have turned it in or the teacher may not have graded it yet. So just please note that that grade over here is reflective of when it was last updated, which sometimes can be up to, to a week or two behind the current date. If, for example, we wanted to check out English 9 with 17 missing assignments and an F, we wanted to see exactly what those 17 missing assignments were or get some more details about that individual class. The nice thing is we can actually click on this uh, title of this uh, the course under Gradebook and it'll take us straight to the details of this Gradebook. So you can see all the assignment numbers, the description of the assignment, the type and category of the assignment, which I'll get to in just a second because that's actually fairly important, and the score. All right, and so the scoring here looks different than our scoring here at our school, um, and you can see whether or not it was completed in the due date. All right, so the main things here are finding these red boxes. Red boxes are things that are not turned in, things that are missing. And so those are, those are things that I encourage students to try to make sure they get in because it's the biggest thing that students can do is, is turn in their work. Um, it's just silly to not turn it in and not get any grade for it. So we can scroll down here, and there's a lot of assignments in this particular class. But an area I want to have you focus on when you're looking at, okay, how do we prioritize some of this work? Is down at the, the bottom here, you'll see a category, okay? And this, this corresponds to this category um, column here. And you'll see different assignments are assigned to a different category. And so you can identify, okay, my, the weakest category for this student might be their writing, all right? They have an F and the lowest percentage of points earned. So that might be a, a struggle area or a weakness for them, or it might be things that are missing the most assignments. One thing that this demo account is not showing that our accounts do is teachers also assign um, weighting, meaning they'll, there'll be another, another area here that says this is the certain percentage of this student's grade. So for example, a lot of times projects, tests become a larger component of a grade than say classwork or even homework. And so a student should really focus on, okay, how can I get the biggest bang for my buck when I'm working on assignments? So identifying which area, which of these categories has the largest, you know, biggest piece that's associated with it. So if um, quizzes and tests were associated with 60% of a student's grade and a student made up two tests that they missed, that would have a larger impact than even doing 10 or 12 probably um, smaller assignments that maybe have 5 or 10% of a student's grade. So just look at that too. Sometimes um, taking taking those um, pieces and focusing on those is a, is a much... Um, more effective and efficient way to start working on bringing those grades up. Obviously, we'd like to see all the grades high, but you know sometimes we have to start where we can um, and move from there. All right. Another thing that you can notice on your Aries portal is a lot of times parents want to know how do can I how can I reach out to the teacher. 
one of the things that you can do is underneath here, you'll see over here where my mouse is, you'll see the teacher's email. If you click on that, that link, it'll take you straight to your email and it will we'll open up a window that you can just type a straight, an email straight to that teacher um, to, to reach out directly to them. That's a great way to communicate. Phone calls are difficult for teachers because often they're teaching classes, so they don't pick up their phone, but emails are often the most efficient way to get a hold of them. So that, that link right there will directly connect you to your teachers. If you wanted to change classes, you can also go here. I always like to go back to the main gradebook, which is underneath grades. Okay, and this is this is the gradebook details. So this shows you the details, and this is the summary, the gradebook summary up here. So we'll go back to that, and we'll we'll look at something else. One thing that I don't want you to have, you know, a heart attack about is you might see underneath this current term area, you might see another blue bar that says prior terms, dropped gradebooks, future terms possibly. That is an area that if we've made changes to classes or things like that, it, it won't reflect their current progress. So if a student, say for example, dropped beginner dance and took PE, beginner dance might actually show up down here and it might actually show up as an F. Please note that these classes down here have no effect on your, your student's current progress. Um, through their classes. It's just it's a setting that we don't have any control over and it just appears there. There's tends to be somewhat uh, a high level of anxiety when students or parents see that. Please just know that that is something that's out of our control but is something that doesn't affect the students current grades up here. Another area if you want to keep an eye on um, your student as they go through high school, you know high school has specific requirements to graduate. And as a student goes through high school, um, at North Tile High School at least, they have two final grading periods. So that's gonna be in January and in June. All the progress reports come out are just for our information only. The two, pro the two final grading periods at the end of January, at the end of June, are the grades that go on our transcript. All right, and there's a couple different ways we can check that. The first is gonna be underneath the grades under transcripts. Okay, so if we click on transcripts, um, we'll see what the student has on there. Likely not a whole lot because they're in ninth grade. You can see that here. If your student is older, they're going to have more and more up here. This transcript, for example, shows um, prior grade levels, so eighth, seventh, sixth. Our transcripts do not show that. It'll show only starting in ninth grade and only completed courses. All right, so this student obviously has completed some courses in their first term, um, and you can see that here with their grades and the credits earned. This is not the most um, pretty way to view it. Um, on yours, there should be an option to print. All right, and so that's what I would suggest trying to do. If you can print the records, it will print out in a much prettier, more digestible fashion. However, there's an e even easier way, in my opinion, to look at this from a parent's perspective. I, I, I'm pretty good at looking at transcripts. Parents are, it's a little bit daunting at times. What I like to have parents do is actually check the, the, the one up, which is the graduation status. Okay, and that's gonna categorize all the classes students have taken and put them in the, the areas required by our school. So you'll see all the different area, the subject areas, English, history, science, social studies, and so forth. The number of credits at North Tile High School, we, require, we have 10 credits for a full year class. So you get five credits in the spring and five credits in the fall. So you'll see this credits completed so far, all right, for English, the credits that a student is enrolled in, and the total credits needed. All right, so this is the total credits required left. So you have 15 here, 25 and 15 makes 40. So that gets you to the total credit requirement. All right, so you can kind of follow along and see, okay, my student is on track. One thing that also causes some, some anxiety, and this is another thing that we don't have any control over, is when you're looking at some of this graduation status report, please note that the credits completed are only classes that have a final grade assigned to them. It does not include current um, or upcoming classes. So if a student is enrolled, say for example, as a senior, and this is the fall semester, they're gonna see, okay, I'm enrolled in five credits of English, and it's still gonna say five needed credits of English. Please just note, if you're enrolled in that five credits, you're gonna get the second five credits from the second semester of that English class, and that will roll over once that second semester starts. So please don't have a meltdown when you see that you still need 20 or 30 credits left in your senior year. Um, just note that that is likely from your second half of your coursework that you're currently enrolled in. Um, the last thing that I'll show you um, regarding grades is the college entrance requirements. We do push college highly here. Um, we realize it's not for everyone, but it is a great option that we would like to have everyone have the availability to apply and attend if they so choose. The college entrance requirements also highlights the things that students have to meet to attend University of California and California State Universities, UCs and CSUs. Okay, It highlights the different areas. These are the A through G requirements you may have heard about and the number of classes that students have. 
have to take, okay? And then also the number that they've completed and then currently enrolled in. So you can kind of keep track of, okay, the student has completed um, the requirements for the UCs and CSUs. Aries is not foolproof. Um, so if a student, say for example, transfers, you won't get um, all this stuff fully aligned with um, the different coursework because we uh, we can't um, list the other other schools' courses in our course catalog. So it won't necessarily 100% 100, 100 be totally accurate, but it gives you a really good idea in terms of where your student's at regarding their A through G eligibility as well. Finally, and I promise I'm almost done, is attendance. The number one predictor of student success in high school is their attendance, and that's a nationwide statistic. If you want to keep an eye on your student's attendance, um, or if you want to check and the student says, yeah, I was there, and if you want to see, oh yeah, were you there? You can log into Aries and actually see their attendance. So if you go to attendance tab and hit attendance, we can log in and check to see where they were at during the day and throughout the entire year. So you can kind of see so at a glance, okay, it's the 13th. This student was already tardy to period one, okay? And they were tardy first period and went home sick. And then they had an unexcused absence and then so on and so forth, all right? So please just note that you can check this. Encourage your student to be here every day on time. The students who are most successful are the students who show up to school every day and in the class on time. If a student misses the first five minutes of class multiple times a week, they are missing key components of their education. So I encourage you to ensure that you help your student be at school on time every single day and on time to every single class. If you have concerns about attendance, please reach out to Alejo Padilla. He's our assistant principal. He's the person who, who really supports students with attendance and ensures that students are in the right place at the right time. That's about it regarding the basics of using ARIES to ensure your student is working their way through their high school curriculum um, at the best possible pace they can. There's a lot more stuff that ARIES can do, but that will be for another video. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have questions about using ARIES, um, I am probably not the best person to solve problems with you because I don't have access to a lot of the, the, the troubleshooting tools. Blanca Carrillo, our registrar, is our ARIES uh, magician. So she will be the one that you'll want to reach out to with any type of issue that you might come up with or questions regarding ARIES. I can do some of the, the, the application pieces of, okay, how do I look at this? What can we solve? But if you have issues of logging in, you need a registration code, something's not working. Unfortunately, I'm not the person for that, but I can definitely connect you with Blanca, who's our school registrar. So once again, enjoy the rest of the school year. Enjoy ARIES because it definitely helps parents and students stay in the loop. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at North Tower High School. Thank you and have a great afternoon.